7654321. What's up everybody? So today I'm going to show you guys how I bred peacock gungeons or peacock gobies. Now, first thing is you want to pick a good pair to breed out. The one on the right here is a male and then the plumper one that's a female this one as you can see there we go get her in focus her head's more slender while his head's more bulbous there you can see she's already kind of plump with eggs right now and they're kind of shy I've already bred these guys out so this is a newer tank to them now I went ahead and added a rock pile back here for them and I'll show you guys why. This is the tank that they were in and the reason why I added a rock pile is they love to breed in these rock piles. Hence why I added them, right? But anyways, they love to hide out in the crevices and then lay eggs up underneath or on. I don't know if they do it sideways or not. kind of makes me wonder because... I made them some nice little caves here so they could put eggs on the bottom of it and take care of it that way. And they tend to, I mean, you can use tubes too, but I wasn't having any luck with the tubes. And I think it's because they were exposed too much and they just, they didn't feel comfortable. But as soon as I added this rock pile, they ended up breeding out in this back corner here. Because I kept looking around, I couldn't find the male for the longest time. And I thought he was dead. And come to find out, he wasn't. He was actually just hiding back there in that back corner. And what happens is the male will take care of the eggs. And he'll fan them, keep them clean. And that's actually where I add my water. Because I keep rock piles in to add water a little faster. Because they'll disperse it and not kick all the moss up. Because if this moss goes upside down, it'll try to grow backwards and then it'll promote algae and stuff like that. So I try not to do that. Anyways, the male will guard the eggs and then the female, she'll just be out and about doing her thing. You'll see her around. So if he goes missing, don't worry about that. And, um... And I, I'm not sure how many days it takes... What I did every time I feed is I just wash to see if there was fry. And they had them one time and I was hoping they'd have some parental care. And they didn't. They had absolutely no parental care. So as soon as I saw some fry, which you can see some here, I pulled out the female. And a day or two later, the male come, came out and then I pulled him out. And there's quite a bit of fry in here. I would say maybe 20 or so that I could see just like right here. Hard telling what could be in the moss and everything. Because they're so small. And you see how itty bitty they are. But they're about a week old. You can see how they move just like their parents do. And I've been feeding these. Uh, let me show you guys real quick. This is what I've been feeding the adults, the Tetracolor Tropical Granules, which a lot of you guys know, this is like my go-to for everything. And as far as the babies, this is what I feed them. I feed in the uh, Sarah Micron growth food. And this has been working pretty good too. I know I got a lot of microorganisms and whatnot in that tank. If you can see in the water, you can see tiny little microscopic things floating around like tiny Daphnia and whatnot. So they do got quite a bit to feed on even at their small age. I did use some of the crushed up tropical granules too. I pretty much used the Sarah Micron food just in case that they weren't taking it in. They seem to be doing pretty strong and as far as temperature this tank is at let me see here. Get you guys focused. It's at 70 some degrees, 75, 76. It's like 76 degrees Fahrenheit. And the TDS, I keep it kind of soft. About 150 TDS. 
Now, they can live in hard water and soft water, but I've learned that they won't breed out in the hard water. I've tried, I've gotten eggs, but for some reason the eggs won't take in the hard water. So, soft water is needed for the eggs. Now, as far as the babies, I've already added some hard water into here. So, I don't, I think they're pretty tolerant to the hard water transition. It's just the maybe the shell of the egg can't hatch out because of the calcium and hardness of the water but yeah that's how i ended up breeding peacock gobies this is the book that inspired me to start breeding peacock gobies which are actually on the cover there and you can see they laid their eggs in a piece of bamboo and there's all kinds of different fish in this book it's a really neat book i will probably do a live stream going through my library of all the different books I have and show you guys but I just wanted to show you guys the inspiration to m me bringing these and I got this book maybe 10 years ago you see the male holding the eggs big plump female the males kind of plump must have been eating a lot of live food but you can see the size difference for sure and they recommend tank size that's about a 10 gallon a little smaller soft water which it says hard neutral water which that is not hard neutral water and around 75 degrees so my parameters were actually pretty close by plant coverage all that jazz driftwood and it tells you all this now I could read all this for you but if you guys want to read it you can just press pause I'll go ahead and show the rest of it if you want to press pause and read it. Now, my plan to continually breed these, since I have the fry in the one tank and then these guys in this tank, I can hop them back and forth, like let the fry grow up out of that tank. And hopefully they have fry in here before that time, or I can move them to another tank until then. Ideally, four tanks would be great. Or maybe even six. That way you can just hop them around out two pairs around that way you can deepen the gene pool and then you have the tanks where you just you have them breed in it and then the fry come out and then you throw them in another one have it do it and then rotate back over kind of like how farmers rotate crops and stuff you rotate your fish and in essence that's pretty much how I breed my rainbow fish too kind of the same technique which I kind of like that technique because all you got to do is catch the fish out real quick and move them over. And not really much work involved. Not like trying to collect eggs every day like I do with these CPDs. Which there's lots of babies in there of them. That's what most of this rack is. It's that same kind of theory. Which I have a group of them in here. Trio in there. Trio in there. And babies in there but I collect the eggs for them but you definitely want to deepen the gene pool with at least two pairs or trios of any fish that you're breeding that way you just don't have brother and sister constantly you can you can mix match switch around and you don't ever worry have to worry about inbreeding mutations and stuff like that so I wanted to touch on that because I think it is important to keep the gene pool deep when breeding fish. All right, so there you have it. That's my experience with peacock gungeons. And I've been trying them for a long time and it's a fish I've always wanted to breed. And just never had luck because I never had an RO system and tried to do it in hard water and all that. And I learned from trial and error and just kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. And finally got some success and I'm happy about it and I wanted to share it with you guys and hopefully um, you guys can learn how to do it yourselves if you want to say you want a school of them or whatnot want to sell them to your local fish store because they can be hard to find sometime and they're a real seasonal fish too so keep that in mind if your store can't get them wait until like I think the spring and fall is normally when they sell them like wholesale and stores and stuff like that could be different in different regions I'm not sure but that's my experience with it and definitely so let's go back a couple key factors is 
softness for the eggs around 150 200 doesn't have to be perfect I bet they could even be a hundred or so just soft enough so the eggs can hatch and the parents they can take a wide parameter same with the fry and the temp was around 76 degrees which I'm sure there could be some fluctuations in there because that room fluctuates a little bit as well and let's see that's that's pretty much about it have a good male good female the males have a more bulbous head and the females have a more slender head and hope I uh, helped you guys out some until next time peace